The depth and width of our Victoria Harbour, together with the zero tariff policy, has created many economic miracles for Hong Kong since the city was open for trade. Our status as an entreport was one of these miracles. It gave rise to early Chinese businessmen. Talking about the history of Hong Kong as a commercial port, we will have to mention Sheung Wan District. It was once the economic hub of the locals. Nampak Hong merchants used to run their business on Bonham Strand and Wing Lock Street. Bonham Strand West was even called Nampak Hong Street. Nampak Hong is Hong Kong history. Hong Kong is a port. 咁當然有好多西方人喺香港度貿易啦，咁但係、呃、中國人自己做嘅生意咧，亦都係好大嘅。咁喺華商嘅經營嘅生意之中咧，南北行可以話係最大嘅。Shipping in the past depended much on wind power. When monsoons swept down from the north, goods from northern China were shipped to Hong Kong to be re-exported to Southeast Asia and other parts of the world. But when the wind from the south came, goods from Southeast Asia were sent to Hong Kong to be re-exported to the north. This is why the business is called Nampak Hong, literally meaning South North House. In the past, it was very interesting. You can see it on the island. One boat, 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 one boat. When a cargo ship entered a port, barges from different merchants approached. Workers climbed up the cargo ship with a rope to get samples for buyers. The transaction between the buyer and the seller could be finished before the ship anchored. This kind of efficiency maintained the prosperity of Victoria Harbour for more than a century. Kintai Lung is the oldest existing Nampak Hong house in Hong Kong. It has witnessed the history of Nampak Hong. The founder of Kintai Lung, Cheng Huang Rong, came to Hong Kong from Chaozhou by a red top Chaozhou boat in 1851. He brought along with him the way Chaozhou people ran their business. This is where the history of Nampak Hong started. 其实明朝这一带就是非我们海上贸易非常活跃的，但这里就出海盗，这里就当时就走私生意，就大家做同样的生意，在明朝这些人就是海盗，到了清朝海上贸易合法了，这些人就是海商，是同一帮人做同样的事，所以这这样的贸易的方式，其实若从明朝追溯下来，一直到了，呃，上呃香港开埠之后呢，其实这这样的贸易传统已经有几百年了。In the museum of Chen's ancestral house in Chan Mei village in Shantou stands the shop sign of Kin Tai Lung in 1851, when it was first developed in Hong Kong. Kin Tai Lung was among the earliest Chaojunese who came to Hong Kong to trade. They focused on the import and export of rice, but they also shipped local products from China to Southeast Asia. They managed to earn a lot of money in a few years. Hong Kong, it opened in a British economic system under it. 英国呢，有一个非常完善的、带有近代性质的商业的法律制度，特别是是公司法。这这样的有利于商业发展的这个法律制度呢，是传统中国所没有的。Having made a sound foundation in Hong Kong, Kin Tai Lung began to develop its business in other places in Southeast Asia. They started joint ventures. Actually, they really achieved globalization early in the 19th century. But the Chens never forgot their roots in Shantou. From here, up to here, I was a fighter. I was a dinhyang, a sell lap zhou, a cow tow. I said, "I'm going to go back home. I'm 
，我同只来算。我同叫阿只呀。Henry Chen was born in Singapore. About ten years ago, he came back to Shantou for the first time to worship his ancestors. He is a descendant of Chen Huan Rong, the founder of Kintai Lung. Their chain stores in Singapore, developed by Chen Huan Rong's son, are still operating. He respects his ancestors. He is now learning about their family history. Henry Chen has much interest in his family history. His house in Singapore is filled with articles left by the ancestors. You miss home, you know, so you bring the home here. Thai Gong. Chamber of Commerce. Chinese Chamber of Commerce. This is Henry Chen's father. The other two are his uncles. They have witnessed the high summer of their family business. When I was young, I go there. I see a lot of bamboos in the river. And these bamboos are full of rice. And they say this book belongs to, uh, uh, more or less. Most of the, uh, the cargo in these bamboos belongs to Dang Guanli. Dang Guanli refers to Chen Yuanli in Cantonese. In about 1880, the Chens of Kintai Lung in Hong Kong developed a chain store, Dang Guanli in Singapore which later became the largest importer and wholesaler of rice and salts there. From Dang Guan Li's early business letters, we can see that stores around the world, managed by different households, maintained close collaboration. Family relationship in the sense that, I mean, we trust each other. All, all, all Chinese businessmen are like, you, I trust you, you trust me, and we just carry on merrily as long as they make money. 就是一个家族自己非常有计划的、非常有规划的，在一个地方建立一个总行之后，然后在各地设立分行，这也是建立联号的一种方式。对，如果如果看回去，其实中国商人啊，他早期在没有一个商业法律的情况下面，大家要讲求一个信用，确实呢要靠一些传统的网络，传统的的这个呃人跟人之间的关系了，所以亲族关系是让大家觉得比较可靠。Kintai Lung set up its base in Hong Kong and developed chain stores in Shantou, Singapore and Thailand. Among them, the scale in Thailand was the largest. It was set up by Chen Huang Rong's son, Chi Hong, in 1871 in Bangkok. And Dang Huang Li Limited, as it is called, further extended Nam Pak Hong's business area. My family is about 150 years old. I'm the third one. Now more than 130 years later, Dang Huang Li Limited is still operating at its old site. It has preserved much of its tradition, which reminds us of the scene we saw in Triangle Pier in the past. Dang Huang Li Limited expanded to such an extent that they supported not only the Chens, but also the relatives in Chaozhou. Chen Zhou Chang's father was one of those who went to work in Bangkok from Shantou. There were a lot of rumors about the Chens in Shantou. Next to Dang Huang Li Limited stands the Chen's ancestral house, 
which has a history of 120 years. Today, Chen Chi Hong's family has become one of the most eminent families in Thailand. However, they still stick to Chinese traditions. Dang Huang Li Limited has never left its old site near the river since it was here 140 years ago. These overseas Chinese persist in the traditional management system. The trust is the most important thing. My father gave me specific instruction that you got to create trust among your family. Don't try to cheat them. So I maintain a, a very clean image. By persisting in traditions, Kintai Lung and their chains developed excellent credit. They began to act as a business voucher and started to provide remittance services. They helped overseas Chinese to remit money to their homeland. The improvement of life brought about by the remittances is reflected on the majestic houses in present-day Shantou. The houses are tile-roofed and the beams are engraved. When Kintai Lung became rich overseas, they went back to their homeland to build a big mansion in the 1930s. The house is considered the best house built by overseas Chinese in Lingnan. We are very proud of our ancestors and our roots in Suotau, in China, that uh, our great-great-grandfather has built, continued to build up uh, in China. We use the profit we gain from overseas trading to build the house in our village, Suotau. People in Chaozhou often work away from home. Starting from Hong Kong, Kintai Lung expanded its business network to Southeast Asia. Even now, it stands as a major company in Hong Kong and Thailand's finance and business sectors. The history of the Chen's business is actually the epitome of the development of Nampag Hong. Nampag Hong began to develop after Hong Kong was declared as a free port by the British in 1842. Hong Kong became the re-export center of Chinese food items in the early 1900s. Both dried food and fresh food were shipped to Hong Kong for re-export to other Chinese communities. Nam Nampag Hong business became popular in a very short time. Their trade union, the first of its kind among Chinese, was established in 1868. The building of Nampag Hong Association, located on Bonham Strand East, has been renovated three times. It was first built with red bricks. Under colonial governance, it was necessary for Chinese businessmen to hold together. 即是中國人的社團,這個是第一個,保證了我們中國人的權益,在生意上面,各方面得到各方面的支持,大家加強的團結,我們在生意上就好做。Nampag Hong Association is the place where trading houses could hold meetings. Their trading rules and practices have been formulated here by the Executive Committee of the Association. 當年公所定出那個貿易的條約呢, Thus, Nampak Hong was also called 98% house. They got a commission of 2% for each transaction, that is $2 for every 100. The way Nampak Hong deal among themselves is unique and traditional. Potential buyers gather and place secret tenders, answering the call of Abacus. They offer a price according to the quality of the goods. 
they communicate with an abacus with a base so that the prices can be kept unknown to others. This kind of communication is still used today. Poipun 我心目中,夾客是比數很耐的,比高啲價都低上唔到個周轉啊利息啊,月客呢,雖然比得平啲,但佢比千塊,我往往係賣比個比千塊嘅,就唔會賣比個比千萬嗰個嘅。我問你
their goods may have become less diversified, their scales may have become smaller, but they are still there. Senior Nampag Hong merchants can still vividly remember the hustle and bustle of the past. Nampak Hong can be regarded as a cradle of Chinese businessmen in Hong Kong. Here one can see how Chinese people run their business. They stick to Confucianism, following traditions and trusting each other. Can this kind of Chinese business philosophy be preserved?